On a recent live stream, Michael Person from Sweden super chatted me and mentioned he'd like to see a video on monthly dividend stocks. So Michael, here it is, four safe monthly dividend stocks. And if this should be your very first time using YouTube and you've been lucky enough to stumble upon my channel, do me a solid and tip top tippity tap that thumbs up icon and make some confetti. Did you see the confetti? Oh, you did? Good. Well, now we can get started. We're heading to the Great White North and kicking it off with Pembina Pipeline Corporation, ticker PBA. They are an oil and gas storage and transportation company in Western Canada that's balanced across oil, gas, and natural gas liquids. They have a yield of about 5.5% and a dividend safety score of 80. Now, Pembina spends billions of dollars to construct essential pipelines expected to last upwards of 100 years, and that leaves them with few competitors. Now, when I'm looking through company propaganda, I really like to get that warm and fuzzy feeling when they talk about their commitment to the dividend, which Pembina has, and I love that their dividend has been maintained and grown, as they say, since 1998 and is second on their list of capital allocation priorities behind maintaining a strong balance sheet. Now, Simply Safe Dividends shows a zero year growth streak, but because of currency fluctuations, this can be a bit wonky. Pembina is currently paying $1.93 a year, which is good for 21 cents per month per share. Now, from what I've read, as a Canadian company, Pembina's dividends paid out to US investors are subject to a 15% withholding tax. But investors can avoid this tax by holding Pembina in retirement accounts. Otherwise, with some additional paperwork, investors can generally claim a tax credit with the IRS to offset the withholding tax. Their shares have been increasing, likely used to fund growth projects, and sales have generally followed. But do note that net debt has been ticking up and is at about 45% according to Simply Safe Dividends. The demand for renewable energy is always going to be an ever-present threat and risk to the oil companies, but personally, I think that it's going to be more than a decade before companies like Pembina are seriously hurt by renewable energy, so always invest in oil companies at your own risk. Now, we've covered this company quite a bit on the channel, and with good reason, because they are the monthly dividend dividend company, Realty Income, ticker O, and have a dividend safety score of 70 and a current yield near four and a quarter percent. Realty Income is a real estate investment trust or REIT. Now that allows you to become an instant retail and industrial landlord that, like their name says, pays a monthly dividend. Realty Income founders William and Joan Clark acquired their first property in 1970, a single Taco Bell, and has now grown to over 11,200 properties in the United States and Europe with top tenants like Walgreens, 7-Eleven, Dollar General, and FedEx. Now, Realty Income has beautiful and incredibly detailed investor presentations on their website that I highly recommend checking out. Realty Income is a dividend aristocrat with 27 years of increases. They're currently paying $2.97 annually or 24 and three quarters cents until the next quarterly raise. You've heard that right, quarterly raise, as they have 99 consecutive quarterly dividend increases under their belt as well. Now, because Realty Income primarily leases to tenants with a service or non-discretionary business, they're much more likely to be insulated from the internet retailers. And because of this, their cash flows are largely predictable. They have a really great management team, and I think this makes them a fantastic component for monthly dividend income. Our next stop is at Main Street Capital, ticker M-A-I-N. They're a business development company, which means they provide debt and equity financing to relatively small and highly levered companies that can't access traditional financing. They have a dividend safety score of 62 and a current dividend of 6%. I personally dislike BDCs because I feel I'm just not knowledgeable 
knowledgeable enough about their business and how they're making the money. And from what I can tell, they do make that money by making risky loans to risky borrowers. And in the event of an economic downturn, that can really put pressure on those risky loans. And I think it really increases the likelihood of default. And while looking through Main Street's portfolio of companies, I had only recognized one name, although New York Pizza Department caught my eye and made me hungry, but it was Phantom Fireworks, which is a recapitalization loan, meaning they restructured their debt by turning equity into debt or obtaining new capital for expansion and whatnot. But I did read that Maine is an industry leader and no investment accounts for more than 3% of the overall portfolio and they have less than 10% exposure to any given industry. I did find it interesting that most of Main Street's loans are first lien secured loans which means that in the event of a default they would get paid first and that would give Main Street the right to seize property if their loans go unpaid. Now this strategy does reduce the risk of significant loan losses during downturns. Main Street's payout ratio right now is at its lowest level since 2018, giving them a little bit of wiggle room in the event of a prolonged recession. Their shares have been increasing, which is okay because they can raise more money to invest in their business. So we also need to see that total sales are rising, which they have, so we're all good there. And they've had 11 years of dividend growth, but their dividend growth has been lacking, but it's made up for by their pretty high yield. Their current dividend is at $2.58 annually, which is good for 21 and a half cents a month. So while I still think that BDCs like Main Street Capital are too risky for my personal taste, I'd love to know if you invest in companies like Main Street Capital and if you agree and you think that they are one of the safest, if not the safest, BDC in the industry. Now you don't have to agree with me on this one, but our last company is Agree Realty, ticker ADC. Now they're a pretty similar company to Realty Income. They have a portfolio of 1,510 properties and some really well-known tenants. And by the way, I think they give Realty Income a serious run for their money with their investor presentations, which I have a link in the description below that I think you should check out. Agree has a dividend safety score of 61 one and a current yield of about three and three quarter percent. Their top three tenants are Walmart, Tractor Supply Company, and Dollar General, which make up 15.2% of the portfolio, with Walmart being the biggest at 6.6%. And when I look at their national tenants, it's like playing a game of try to find a logo you're not familiar with. It's interesting that they also have four core investment principles, which are e-commerce resistance, recession resistance, avoidance of profit private equity sponsored tenants and real estate that has strong fundamentals. And of course you know that I love to see that commitment to the dividend, which they have when they say, quote, provide consistent high quality earnings growth and a well covered growing dividend, which that dividend has been growing for nine years with 10 of those uninterrupted and currently $2.81 per share annually or 0.234 cents per month. They have an AFFO payout ratio of only 73%. And while they have been issuing shares, they're clearly using that money to invest with as we see their total sales almost rising in lockstep. Now this is a must in my book. If you're issuing more shares on the market, you better, you better, you bet be bringing more cash in the door because otherwise what are you doing with that money? But there's currently no sale here as their dividend is about 1% below their five year average and their forward price to adjusted funds from operations is exactly in line with their five year average. Not to mention that they're at the high end of their 52 week price range. Now while I currently have never invested outright in ADC, I'd love to see them a little bit cheaper, maybe closer to the bottom end of that 52 week price range, but they are firmly on my radar. The community wants to know what is your favorite monthly dividend stock? And have you ever thought about getting a dividend paycheck every single week? Well, what if I told you I ran an experiment to see if it would be possible to do that with dividend aristocrats only? Well, you can see the result of that experiment right here and I will talk to you there.